Oh, hey, my name is Louis, and this is my video about adversary in the middle attacks. Maybe let's start with explaining what an adversary in the middle attack is. It's a mouthful, but basically it's a very advanced phishing scenario where they will send you a phishing email containing a URL either directly in the email itself or they'll attach a, a file, HTML, a Word document, a PDF that contains the URL. And typically they'll use some kind of forwarding mechanism to bypass safe links or URL reputation detonation, meaning I will use as an attacker a legitimate domain that is capable of forwarding the user who clicked on my URL to my eventually malicious page. Um, and it works very well. And I've noticed that these adversary in the middle attacks are becoming more often and often. It's not a new thing, it's becoming a very common thing. And that's very dangerous. Another thing I noticed is that these phishing campaigns often start with your high privileged users. Meaning that these adversaries will first target your CEO, your CFO, your CIO, uh, people of an important status within the company. If they do their research well, they'll first target them. Why? Well, if I were an, a threat actor and I wanted to, to, well, yeah, start my campaign, I would waste my bullets first on the big fishes before Microsoft catches up and starts blocking my infrastructure because eventually my campaign will be discovered and i rather send my emails first to somebody very important and if I manage to compromise his account, well, I will be able to escalate much further rather than I'm capable of somebody who is maybe a, a carpenter in the company. Secondly, and this is the part where makes it an adversary in the middle attack is that these phishing pages, when you click on the URL and you eventually end up on um, the credential catcher, these pages often have the capability to dynamically download the company's branding, meaning when my company um, has set up custom branding, the adversary their page will dynamically, based on the email address, download the original branding and display it on the phishing page. Very interesting. This is very convincing for end users who are, well, not properly trained to look at the URL or, or, or um, busy with something else on their head and they're focusing and they're saying, oh, wait, this is a legitimate sign in and, and they're maybe distracted. So it can be very convincing to uh, an end user to see, hey, this is the custom branding. I'm used to this. Wait, let me just quickly log in and see what's going on behind this URL. Another element which is very interesting and which pretty much makes it an adversary in the middle attack is the fact that these phishing pages are capable of handling your multi-factor authentication. The old school or the simple phishing attempts after when I enter my password, it stops because I will be prompted for MFA and those basic phishing attempts aren't capable of handling my multi-factor authentication. An adversary in the middle attack is capable of handling your multi-factor authentication, authentication requests and will put himself in the middle so he can relay those multi-factor prompts. But maybe let me show you it in the portal because I've been playing around with one and messing with the threat actors to find some stuff out that I wanted to share with you. So let's paste the URL into my sandbox and you can see immediately I'm going to mentimeter.com because this is the legitimate domain that the threat actors are abusing because it has a good reputation and is capable of bypassing URL detonation, URL reputation mechanisms of Microsoft. And this here, I'm quite unsure if it's a legitimate Cloudflare or not, if it's just trying to trick me. And right now they are faking that I'm assigning it. It gives me an indication that I'm trying to authenticate and everything is going okay, but oh, no, you need to sign in. Please enter your credentials. So I start with entering my password, uh, pardon me, my, my, my username and entering my password. And this account is configured without any MFA, so it should go through without any problem. And yes, I do. I'm signed in and when I click no, I'm forward to status.office.com, maybe to give me the indication that something went wrong. Okay. So now I went ahead and configured multi-factor authentication number matching on my account. 
I enter my username, enter my password and press sign in. And you'll notice that it takes much longer than previously. This is because right now the adversary in the middle is actually presented with an authentication, well, multi-factor request. And he just forwarded it to me via the malicious website. Right now I'm going to my Tenergator app, pressing in 71, confirm, and suddenly I'm signed in. And to prove that I'm signed in, I'm getting the same experience as if I just entered my primary password. Now I configure text messages as a multi-factor authentication method. Um, it can grab my, my phone number and I'm getting a text message right now. So I enter the code and well, I'm not surprised, but if I press verify, I also get signed in. Great, text messages also work. As a last test, I configured a Fido2 key as an authentication method and I press sign in and then, well, I can't keep waiting. This is because the adversary in the middle isn't capable of intercepting my Fido2 authentication request. These authentication requests go directly to Entra ID and aren't um, technically possible to intercept or to, rel to relay them to me. Um, so the website is kind of stuck because it it cannot continue. There is an MFA method there, but it, it cannot relay it, it cannot grab it. So very interesting because now it shows me that Fido2 is a, the perfect method to protect me from these advanced phishing techniques. Now, out of interest, let's go look into the sign-in logs. We can see there are multiple IP addresses from Amsterdam trying to authenticate and successfully authenticate using an MFA by uh, claiming the token and you can see there's first an interrupt which means this is the adversary being interrupted and then getting the token and forwarding it to uh, me so I complete the MFA request and I've tested it and all of these they go through and they all go to office home applications so that's also a very important indicator when investigating these adversary in the middle attacks they often use the application office home and when i look at the ip address we can see it's an ip of a data center somewhere in amsterdam interest so after playing around with the adversary their portal sorry guys um i learned that there is only one proper way to stop well not stop to protect me from getting fished when I enter my credentials. And that is this guy. This bad guy is a Fido2 key. Um, and my experiments showed that you cannot fish these Fido2 keys because the authentication is going directly to Microsoft. There is no way they can play a man in the middle on the authentication part of a Fido2 key. And I can only advocate that you use a Fido2 key as much as possible. I've been going Fido2 key only for the past six months and I keep it between next to my headset. I have a little pouch where I keep my headset and I also hide my um, Fido2 key there. I always have it in combination with my laptop. So where my laptop goes, there goes also my headset and there goes my, um, my Fido2 key. Now you could say, hey, Louis, they can steal your Fido2 key when they steal your backpack. Yeah, but then they'll still have to get either my fingerprint or know my PIN code, which makes it the multi-factor. I have the private key, which is stored within the Fido2 key, and I have the fact that I know my, my code, my PIN code, or I have my magic key, my, my fingerprint that works to authenticate as well. And I have to say, it's been the best change I ever made. I pretty much don't need my password manager anymore. I just sign in, use my Fido key, bam, and I'm in. And I can only advocate for people to go as much as possible to Fido2 only. Um, maybe start with your IT team, because it is a cost, um, but it is a very good protective way. And also, if you're up to it, try to convince your CEO, your CFO, your high, your big whales, and Tell them, hey, we want to do something cutting edge and we want to do something innovative and we want you to be part of it. And just hand them over a Fido2 key and hopefully they'll like it as much as I do and start using it. The best method that I have found is, and, and to, to use it actually, is finding a way that it always is close to you and not something at a keychain that is somewhere in, hanging in the kitchen, 
but it's always close to the fact to my laptop. So when I need to sign in, I can easily take it out and plug it in and go. That is the key element and the benefit of using a feeder 2 key. Keep it close to your device or the where you're authenticating it and keep it somewhere safe, but that will ensure that you'll always be grabbing to your feeder key and not be grabbing to your password and then the classic multi-factor authentication. Those are my tips. So this was my video. Thank you, Mar thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.